Hey, welcome back to the Guillemot Kayaks Workshop. I'm Nick Schade and we're building the Petrol Sea Kayak. In this episode we will be doing the finish work. So it starts out with the final fairing sanding, uh, which is leveling the fill coats and then works into varnishing and multiple coats of varnish, leveling the varnish, the wet sanding at the end and finishing up with the final coat of varnish. I was thinking this was going to be the last episode, but it turns out that the outfitting, putting in the seats and the deck lines, etc., uh, constitute enough for another full video. So that will be the next video after this one. So let's get right to the varnishing. So I'm ready to do the uh, final sanding, I hope, on here. I will start by just uh, washing it down with a little. Uh, water with a dash of ammonia in there. Um, just get any blush that may be on there off. Now I'm going to hit it with a long board, um, 60 grit again. Again, I'm just trying to level out any sags or drips or ripples in the uh, finish and get a good starting point for the power tool. So a little bit of hand sanding with a long board and 60 grit. Sanding with the long board, we want to get this nice uniform gray. I've got a couple spots here where there's a little bit of the gloss left. So that's a slightly low spot. Up in here there's some slightly low spots. And as you get down here, you see there's more spots where I just haven't sanded enough yet. And i got these blotchy patterns here. Basically, those are low spots. The high spots get sanded first, get turned gray, and then the low spots um, get sanded once the high spots on either side of it are down to the same height as the bottom of the low spot. So, uh, there's a little bit of uh, blotchiness up in here, and you'll notice as you do this, these low spots often end up where the staples were. There's a line of staples right here and a line of staples right here. And you see a little bit of blotchiness in here, a little bit of blotchiness in here. Again, I've mentioned this in other builds. The forms were here and the boat, the raw wood strips flex between the forms. So when you go to sand it, the part that's supported gets sanded ever so slightly more. It's really unavoidable. Um, if you're putting any pressure on the sanding uh, tool at all, it's going to press this down a little bit. And um, where it's supported, you're going to get a little bit more aggressive sanding. And as a result, you're going to get this patterned every 12 inches or whatever your form spacing is, where there's a little bit of a low spot when you go to sand it out. What makes this sanding go as fast as possible is getting that initial fairing really good. Um, and then when you put on the glass, making sure the glass is smooth. And then when you put the fill coats on, make sure they're as uniform as possible. And the better job you do at all of those things, the least amount of sanding you're going to have to do. Because basically all we're going to try to do is sand off the high spots. Um, so the more uniform it is, the less sanding you need to do because there will be fewer high spots. Basically, if it's perfectly level, that means there's no high spots and you wouldn't have to do hardly any fairing sanding. Um, so I'm just going to continue sanding out the boat here. Um, and again, I'm using the 60 grit here on the long board. This is pretty aggressive. Um, but we're trying to get this done. The 
more aggressive we are with this stage, the quicker it goes. If you try and be careful by using like 120 grit, um, it ends up that either you quit before you're done or you end up with an uneven surface because the sandpaper is riding along that surface and not leveling off, cutting off the high spots. So I'm just going to continue on. One thing to think about um, while I was doing the sanding here is the benefit of a longer sanding block here. Basically this is going to bridge over something that's about this long, whatever this is, 16 inches, 14 inches, something like that. Um, where if you use a regular 5 inch random orbital, basically the most you can hope for that to bridge over is 5 inches. So it will, more, a random orbital power sander obviously will get to this uniform gray a lot quicker. Um, but it'll do it by conforming to the surface better. We really don't want it to conform at this point. With this first sanding, we're trying to get the surface to conform to our sanding tool, not the sanding tool to conform to the surface. Um, the surface may not be perfect, and it's not going to be something you can see with your eye um, in regular light, and it's not going to become apparent until you're done with the whole varnishing and you look at it and you see little ripples in the surface. I'm not saying I'm going to completely eliminate those ripples, but by using a longer board I can level the surface and make it more continuous over this 14 inch surface as opposed to a 5 inch random orbital surface. And with the random orbital, if, if you just hold a random orbital in one spot for long enough, it'll eventually drill a hole right through the boat. Obviously it would take quite a long time, but it's not leveling, it's just abrading whatever it's touching. Where this, if it doesn't touch it, it doesn't wear into it. So these low spots are still shiny because this tool cannot hit that surface until the surface on either side of it is down to the low point of that. And so that's the purpose of the fairing tool, is to knock the high spots down until they're down to the level of the low spots. I will, when I'm done with the long board here, I will come back with the random memorial. And the purpose of that is get rid of the scratches I made using the 60 grit sandpaper on here. I'll go to 80 grit, 120, 220, and then start varnishing. So here's the bottom of the hull before I've done any sanding. I've started a little bit of sanding here and no sanding down here. This side is already sanded. Um, and you know, this looks pretty smooth and clear and nice. Um, some people would say, you know, why sand it at all? Well, you can start to see here, where I've just started to sand, um, that there are drips and sags running across here. They're not big, but they, they exist there. Um, and even though I've got a nice gloss here and it looks pretty smooth in this light, um, you get reflected light on this and it'll look kind of crappy. I also have some little drips right here. When I uh, fill coated this side, I had masking tape along here and the uh, epoxy ran over the masking tape and a little bit dripped down in here. Um, so again, I've got a stiff pad here. Um, so it's not conforming, but this... Uh, fairing board is adjustable as far as curvature so turning this screw I can make it bent concave or I can make it bent convex so what I tend to do is get the board so it kind of matches the curvature general curvature of the surface I'm sanding and then 
I have at it. Um, so I'm going to work from here, from this side over here, down to the other side. Um, and so you'll see the progression from lightly sanded, basically no sanding, to lightly sanded, to fully sanded. That's pretty well sanded out. Um, there's still the occasional little darker spot that hasn't been quite sanded as much as elsewhere. Um, again, that tends to line up with where those forms were. There's a form right here, there's a form right here, form right here. So you see slight low spots around those areas, um, taking a little bit more to sand down. You also notice that the initial sanding goes really quick knocking off the high spots and getting it 90% of the way there um, because basically you're not sanding that much material at that point. You're just knocking off the high spots so the amount of work being done is just in those little spots where it's sticking up. As you get down to the point where you're really close to done, um, now you're sanding the whole surface. So the whole sander is working and you've got to take that whole surface down to the level of the lowest spot. So it takes longer. Um, and, you know, some spots like this, I'm not sure that they even show up. Here you know, looks good. You know, there's a little bit of splotchiness in there, a little bit of splotchiness in there, some little bit darker spots. Um, I could probably keep on sanding. I've got enough fill coat here to deal with that. Um, but I think what I'm just going to do is they're close enough that when I go with the random orbital that'll in the process of getting rid of the scratches from the 60 grit here I will get down through that area and get it all smooth and even. Um, so that's the plan. Now I'll just finish up sanding. So I just went over the whole boat with 100 grit on my uh, 3 millimeter random orbital sander. Um, I did not have any contour pad on it, I just had the standard uh, pad on this which is a somewhat soft pad. Um, but uh, I was still working on sort of leveling and starting to get rid of the scratches from the fairing board. Now I'm going to put 120 grit um, sandpaper on here with the contour pad. This will uh, conform to the shape a little bit more and work more on getting rid of the scratches from the um, fairing and making good surface for varnish. <laughs> jump up to 220 and that should be enough uh, to be ready for varnish. I'll use the random orbital first, go over the whole thing, then come back and touch things up with the hand sander. <laughs>
So these are standoffs for the uh, hold down straps that'll hold the hatch in place. Um, the, these basically get some down pressure on the gasket so they get a good seal. So I'm using this one inch tape as an indication of where the webbing's going to be lined up with the screw holes and then I'm using the one and a half inch tape to give me a spacing off the edge of the hatch just a uniform spacing and then masking all the way around it and I'll glue those down with epoxy.
this episode. Um, in the next episode, we will be doing the outfitting, putting in the seat, uh, deck lines, hatches, uh, etc. So thanks again for your support by hitting like and uh, supporting me on Patreon. And if you're interested in building a boat like this, check out my uh, website at guillemotkayaks.com. I've got plans for this kayak and a bunch of other small boats. Building your own boat's a really gratifying project. I think if you enjoy watching this series, you'd enjoy making a boat even better. So until the next episode, thanks for watching and happy paddling.